One day at night, I'm on the second floor and I hear this buzzing sound. I look up, we could see the top of the uh, baseball park from our second floor. Yeah. Colonel Kerstor flying up out of the, mi the middle of the baseball park. So it was really kind of interesting to see, you know, the, the baseball park get demolished and the Herbert Hoover Boys Club yeah. come up. We wanted to have an impact in a positive way on these young people as they were growing up. And there were a lot of challenges for many of these youngsters and we felt the club could help to improve their circumstances. Life was really very challenging. Things were still kind of difficult from a race relations standpoint and there really wasn't a lot for inner city kids to do. The college said boy, this is the girls club, but it turns out that it was for boys only. I accepted with the hope that at least girls would be admitted. We all learned how to swim at the Herbert Hoover Boys Club. And you know, you learn how to tread water. We can still do all that stuff to this day. Our basketball teams were representatives of the Missouri for AU, so we would have different uh, races on the team. I was very disappointed that they did not, they were not accepting girls at that time. But I was determined that I would do whatever I could for the hope that girls would be included. And finally, very late, very, very late, they were. And so that's why the name, of course, is now Boys and Girls. I got to know a lot of the the workers that were there at the time, and they knew me on the regular, so whenever I wanted to come down and hang out for a few minutes, they would let me. I came down to get my teeth cleaned for free. You know, it, it was just a pretty good experience for everyone in the neighborhood who got a chance to be a part of it. The club gave me something that I don't know if I would ever have had, had I not come. Um, I had only really kind of been to St. Louis and Mississippi um, before I came here. And so in my time here and being involved, I was able to do a lot of traveling outside of St. Louis that I probably, just coming from my economic situation, may not have ever had the opportunity to do. It seemed like a small little entity in St. Louis that was churning out great things for children. And the way that it has evolved over the years under Dr. Fowler, I think it has had a tremendous impact not only on children, but adults in the city and those adults that serve children. I think the club has shown a tremendous amount of effort in bringing those two together. I eventually uh, became treasurer of the association when we were about a, a million two. And we had a bookkeeper that would come in like uh, two days a week. And so from that point, we just kind of grew from this one location here at Herbert Hoover to I think about five or six locations now and we changed the name from Herbert Hoover to the Boys and Girls Club of Greater St. Louis. We really wanted to associate ourselves with a national movement. You know, every day that I came in the club after school, you know, it was about, hey, how are you doing? How's everything at home? You know, just being around such a, um, a good environment, a caring environment. One of the best parts of being on the board is hearing the youth of the year and, and uh, kids actually tell their stories of what the situations they faced and how the club uh, made them a better person and how the club brought them along. I came in not so confident and being in a lot of the programs changed my perspective on everything and now I have a lot of self-confidence. Favorite programs with the Boys and Girls Club would probably be Passport to Manhood because it's all the guys we sit in there and we have very interesting conversations about what's going on in the world today. It was a fun experience. Um, it kind of pushed me for the writing process because in order to become Youth of the Year, you have to write a lot of essays. It taught me that no matter who, who I am, what I look like, I can be confident in myself and my abilities and who I am and what it is that I can do. I think the biggest impact we have made has come in the wake of the Michael Brown shooting in Ferguson. And so under the leadership of Dr. Fowler, we collaborated with the Ferguson School District and a year after, we opened our first club at the Ferguson Middle School. It came with overwhelming support for our summer camp and we were able to get the funding to have it year-round. 
My son has been a member of the club for five years. It's his club now. <laughs> he takes total ownership on it. He wants to go every day. So this is the village that we have. When, when, when you hear it takes a village to raise a child, this, this is our village. I just think the, the future looks really brighter. I mean, a lot's been done in the, the 50 years, and I've only been on board for you know, a little over a decade, but I think the future looks really bright for St. Louis. Happy 50th birthday, Boys and Girls Club of Greater St. Louis. Happy 50th anniversary, Boys and Girls Club of Greater St. Louis. Woo! Happy 50th birthday, Boys and Girls Club of Greater St. Louis, and I wish you 50 more, and I hope I'm here for all 50 of those years. Happy 50th birthday, Boys and Girls Club of Greater St. Louis. A happy 50th birthday to the Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater St. Louis. A happy 50th birthday to Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater St. Louis. Happy 50th birthday. Happy birthday. Happy 50th birthday. Happy 50th birthday, and, and many more. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to the club. Happy birthday.